All right, so welcome to lesson number two. We're going to be talking about airport procedures today and just going over really quickly over some of the stuff that you're going to see when you start up the game at an airport and everything you need to know to get around the airport, uh, arrive at an airport, and land at an airport. So without any further ado, let's get right into it. So just very quickly, before we uh, jump into the sim, we'll just go over a little bit of theory. And I've got a bunch of pictures here that I've taken from the game uh, just to show a few different uh, elements that you can find at the airport. Uh, so the first one is runway headings. Uh, so you can see here on the left, I've got a picture of a runway. Uh, and you're going to see there's a number 32 there. And if we were to go to the other end, you'd actually see there's a number 14. Uh, so basically what that is, is obviously the runway number. And when you're landing, they'll tell you what, uh, ATC will tell you what runway to land on. Uh, those numbers match up to compass headings. So if you were to take a compass and pull it out, you would see the runway 32 is actually on a heading of 320 on your compass. And same thing if you're at the other end, you could look the other way and obviously the opposite of 320 is 140. Uh, so that's runway headings. Uh, runway threshold is basically uh, where we see the white line and those uh, vertical white bars you don't want to land before that line when you're coming in to land. Um, it won't make a huge difference in the sim. I imagine in real life the pavement that they use uh, before the runway threshold isn't exactly the same as what they use for the runway or something like that. Uh, so when you are landing try and make sure that you uh, hit anywhere after those white lines that you see um, on the runway. All right, so now let's talk about taxiways. Basically, taxiways are how you get around the airport from wherever you were parked to the runway. Uh, there is an assist that you can turn on in the game that will actually put a line on the ground that you can just follow to get around the airport if you're not familiar with the airport. And that can be pretty useful at large airports uh, like O'Hare or something like that. However, for small and medium airports, you don't really need it, to be honest. There's usually only two or three run, uh, taxiways anyways. Uh, at our example airport that we're using on the Gold Coast, uh, as you can see on the left picture, there's a little indication of the different taxiways. The one that's in black is the taxiway that you're on, and then those two other letters indicate where those other taxiways are. And finally, the hold short lines, basically what that is, is basically the line where you need to stop your plane. So let's say the air traffic controller told you to taxi to the runway uh, and hold short. Basically what you would do is you would follow the instructions he gave, you would follow the taxiways he told you to take. In this case, it would probably have been Echo and Charlie. Uh, and then what you would do is you would arrive and you would basically stop your plane before those two horizontal and two dashed lines. Uh, and this is basically all for safety reasons uh, to make sure that if there's a plane that's coming into land, you don't accidentally uh, have a collision. Now we are going to look at uh, lights that are you can find around the airport. So we're back at the runway picture here. And you can see there are four lights on either side of the runway there, just a little bit above the number. And those lights are basically there to basically tell you if you're on the right glide slope heading down to the runway. What you're looking for is you want two white and two red. That means you're on the right glide slope. If you see four white, it's because you're too high. And if you see four red, it's because you're too low. Uh, and so according to what you see as you're descending towards the runway, you can make adjustments like uh, adding more power so that you're, you, you reduce your, your descent rate or lower power if you need to descend even faster or extend flaps or whatever else. Uh, finally, the windsock. Uh, so basically, this is basically to indicate uh, how much wind there is at the moment. We haven't spoken about wind yet. We will in the next lesson. Uh, for now, I just really wanted to give you an introduction without worrying about wind or weather. Uh, basically, the windsock tells you how quickly the wind is blowing at the moment. Uh, so this windsock here that we have in the picture is indicating there's about uh, 10 knots of wind. So basically, the windsock has three notches. Uh, so if it's completely flat, it's because winds are calm. If it's 
just the first part of the windsock is elevated, then it's five knots. In this case, it's indicating 10. And if that last little notch that you see that's pointing downwards were straight, that would actually indicate 15 knots or above. Okay, the final thing we need to look at before we head into the simulator is the traffic pattern, which is basically how you fly around the airport, arrive at an airport and depart an airport. There are basically five segments. Uh, in general, you'll really only be flying one, between one and three of them. If you're going to be departing straight out or departing on some heading that air traffic control clears you for, all you're going to do is fly the upwind and then fly straight out to whatever your destination is. If you are planning on doing uh, some touch and goes and practicing your landings, you're going to end up staying in the traffic pattern. So when you do stay in the traffic pattern, you'll first take off into the wind uh, onto the upwind segment. You'll hold that for around 200, 300 feet, at which point you're going to turn uh, left 90 degrees onto the crosswind leg. Now there are some right hand turns as well. It depends on each airport, but I think in general most airports have a left hand traffic pattern. On the crosswind leg, you'll continue uh, climbing to your uh, pattern altitude, which is usually around a thousand feet above the runway. Uh, there are some exceptions, and the air traffic controller will tell you about it. Once you've got the runway behind you at about a 45 degree angle, you're going to want to turn again onto the downwind leg. The downwind leg, as it says, has the wind at your back. And at this point, you should be at pattern altitude and just be parallel to the runway on your way down. So in a small plane, you want to be close enough that you can actually see the runway and know where you're going, be able to see where you're going to be landing. Uh, next up, as you're getting ready to come in for a landing, you're going to turn onto the base heading. Uh, so base will be 90 degrees off from the runway and 90 degrees off from the downwind, obviously. Uh, the base is where you're going to start doing most of your preparations for landing, starting your descent very slowly, and basically getting ready to land. And finally, you're going to turn onto the final heading, which will be the runway heading, uh, at which point you will do any final landing preparations, uh, adjusting your glide scope, uh, lowering landing gear, uh, lowering flaps, reducing power, you name it. And finally, you're just going to land on the runway and repeat it all over again. When you're arriving at an airport, when you, you want to enter the traffic pattern at a 45 degree angle. So basically, if you're coming in from the uh, west of this airport that we have this up here, uh, basically what you would want to do is you would want to enter directly into the downwind lake at a 45 degree angle so you can see everything that's happening within the traffic pattern and basically just enter, traffic, enter at around uh, the traffic pattern altitude. If you're coming from the east, what you're going to want to actually do is fly over the runway, uh, probably at around 500 or so feet above pattern altitude, and then just turn around and come back into the downwind. The uh, air traffic controller will give you the directions for it, though, so you don't have to really worry about it. But in general, that's how you would land uh, when you're coming from the east side. All right, and now that we saw all that theory, we're ready to jump back into the simulator and get some actual practice. All right, so here we are back in the game. We're gonna head back to the world map and we're gonna basically set up our flight very similar to last time. So we're gonna select the uh, Savage Cub once again and we're going to choose Gold Coast Airport for the arrival and the departure. Uh, and I've selected gate 5, you can really select any gate you want, and arrival runway 32, it's not a huge deal. Uh, then you want to click on the flight conditions, leave multiplayer off, air traffic, I would leave it off just for this second uh, practice flight. And finally for weather, I make sure you're set to clear skies, and make sure your time is set to sometime during the day. Uh, it'll just be a lot easier, and we'll do uh, night flights in an upcoming uh, lesson. All right, with all of that set, I think we're ready to hit fly. All right, here we are back in the cockpit. Uh, so what we're going to be going over today is we are going to be looking at controlled airport operations. Controlled airport operations basically means that there is a tower at the airport. 
Uh, and you can see that tower right there. There's someone in the tower giving directions. Uh, that's to the opposite of an uncontrolled airport where there is no tower and basically you have to handle the radios yourself and there's no one really to tell you where to go and when to go. Uh, we'll look at uncontrolled airports in another flight. For today we're just going to focus on controlled airport operations. So there are two instruments that we should be familiar with uh, before doing this flight. The first one is the uh, compass. A compass is basically divided into 360 degrees and whatever the uh, compass is pointing at is your current heading. So for example, the runway we'll be taking off from will be runway 32, which is on a heading of 320. Uh, we'll also be landing on 32, which is the same runway heading. At the other end of the airport, there's a runway with uh, heading 14, which is the opposite of runway 32. Uh, th these different uh, degrees will come in important uh, headings when we uh, set up for our traffic pattern basically to go around the airport, which we're going to be doing in a couple of seconds. So for this flight, we're actually going to be talking to air traffic control. And to do that, obviously, before we do anything else, we have to start the engine. So we can do that very easily by just hitting the control E shortcut key. And there we go, everything is up and running. Our controls are fleeing clear. All right. So at this point, we're ready to talk to air traffic control. Uh, you can bring up the air traffic control window by just uh, going to this top menu here and clicking on the tower. Or you can hit the shortcut key, whatever you've programmed yourself for uh, here. I think by default it's scroll lock. I've reassigned it to make it a little bit easier. So we're going to be talking to basically the tower, which has a few different frequencies. So there's a frequency for ground, there's a frequency for the tower, and there's also something called ATIS, which basically is what you would tune if you wanted to hear the current weather uh, at, the, um, at the airport. Now, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to ask them for permission to uh, taxi and remain in the pattern. Basically, that means is we'll be taking off, we'll be doing our, our left-hand traffic pattern, coming back to land in a touch and go, and then we'll take off one more time and then come back to the airport again. All right, so the tower gave us our clearance. We can acknowledge that. So you can either hit this with a mouse button like I've been doing, or you can just press the number on your uh, keyboard. They both do the same thing. Taxi to and hold short runway tree two using taxiway Echo Delta Charlie Savage X-ray Golf Sierra. All righty. Uh, so what we're going to do now is we're going to get a pushback. Um, and basically to do that is you basically just hit Shift P and the plane's just going to start backing up. You can imagine there's actually someone doing the pushback there for you. Uh, it's a bit virtual at the moment. But we can see the uh, guys on the tarmac right there watching over us. So we're just going to back the plane up a little bit more. There we go, that should be good enough. And to stop the pushback, you just hit Shift P again, and the plane comes to a stop. Okay, so we're ready to taxi. Everything seems clear. Uh, so the taxiways we're going to be taking, as the air traffic controller told us, are Echo Delta Charlie. Now, like I was saying, there is a setting that you can enable to see the taxiway, and it'll put uh, lines on the taxiways that you can basically just follow where you need to. And I think that's really useful for large airports. Uh, but for a small one like uh, the Gold Coast, we can basically figure this out on our own uh, just by looking at the VFR map. So if we zoom in a little bit, we won't actually see the taxiways here, but because there are so few of them, it's kind of obvious that they want us 
to get to runway 32. Uh, so taxiway echo is basically this uh, guy right here. Uh, and then it becomes delta and then it becomes Charlie along here. And then we just work as we saw in the theory section, we're just going to stop short of the whole short lines and request our takeoff clearance. So just as usual, I'll apply about 2,000 RPM power just to get us moving. Turn the plane around and bring the power back down to 1,400 RPM. Which will be just enough to keep us moving uh, at a safe speed on the ground without putting any wear on the plane either. So basically, um, we're just going to be getting on the taxiway here and you can see right there this is taxiway echo and Charlie is off to the left there. Uh, it's kind of hard to see as you're going by uh, so that that ribbon is as you can tell is a really good idea when you're at a bigger airport because you can very easily uh, get lost or end up on the wrong uh, runway and you wouldn't want that. It's not a huge deal right now because there's no other traffic at the airport where we are uh, but imagine flying into a much busier airport uh, where there are hundreds of takeoffs uh, per day. So we're just going to taxi all the way down here to the end of the runway and I will meet you down there because there's nothing really to see from here to there. Okay, so we are coming up on our whole short lines. Uh, if you were in a bigger airplane, you could go down to the next uh, taxiway to get to the runway, but because we're in a small plane, we're just going to go to the closest uh, entry point to the runway we can use. Now, we're going to want to stop short, like we saw in the theory section, uh, before the hold short line, which you can just make out there. So I'm going to start slowing the plane down so we don't go by them. So remember, it's the two, it's the four lines, two full, two dashed, but you want to stop behind. So I will come to a stop right here. And again, this is for safety reasons to make sure that, you know, there's another r airplane coming in for a landing that you're basically not going to have a mid-air collision. So at this point, we're ready to bring up the ATC uh, window again. And what we're going to do now is we're going to tune the tower frequency. Uh, what is neat about pressing on these buttons is it changes your radio frequencies for you so you don't have to worry about playing with the radio yourself. It'll just do it nice and easily for you. So let's do that. And we're going to request our takeoff clearance from the tower. Tower Savage Alpha Sierra X-ray Golf Sierra at runway 32 ready for takeoff touch and go. Okay, so there we go. Now we've got our approval to take off from the runway, and they're saying to do a left hand uh, traffic pattern. Cleared for takeoff runway 327, X-ray Golf Sierra. And once again, I just used that about 2000 RPM power to get us moving. Lower it down until we're on the runway. And so what we're going to do is, same as last time, I'm going to do the uh, initial takeoff roll from the exterior camera, just because it's a little bit easier to view, because we are in a tail dragger uh, in the cub. So we're going to apply full power, and we're going to rotate at around 50 knots. And then we're going to maintain the runway heading and climb up to the pattern altitude, which at this airport is 1,000 feet. And just before we take off, I noticed that my altimeter isn't set correctly for some reason, so I'm just going to adjust that really quick. Okay, so we're on the runway, everything is all set. Our altitude is set properly with our altimeter, and we're pretty much ready for takeoff. So let's apply full power and get airborne. Right, there we go, the tail came up rather quickly, and rotate. I have to say, all these instruments that they added make flying from the external view so much more enjoyable than it has been in previous games. 
So uh, like I said, I'm just reducing power to around 4,000 RPM. So we can maintain our uh, altitude increase. I'm going to wait to go past the end of the runway, at which point we will start our crosswind turn, the first leg of our traffic pattern to do our touch and go. So all I've got here is I've got around 4,000 RPM of power. I haven't touched a trim. I haven't touched the flaps. I'm just letting the plane fly itself. And we've gone past the end of the runway now. I'm holding the runway heading of 320. And we're going to turn now 90 degrees to start our crosswind leg. And keep an eye on your altitude as well. Once you come up on a thousand feet, you're going to want to level off because that's going to be our pattern altitude. And that's a thousand feet coming up now. So I'm just going to reduce power to around 3,500 RPM to be able to maintain that altitude. Okay, now we are on the upwind leg, and you can see the airport is behind us right there at around a 45 degree angle, so we can start our downwind turn. Uh, if you're using the Gold Coast Airport like I am here, you can basically base yourself off this field, this big empty field here, is what I use as my marker to know when to turn uh, towards the runway heading, which is uh, 140. Alrighty. So there we are. We're parallel to the runway. We're actually a little far. I would have preferred to be a little bit closer, but that's alright. I'm just going to increase. I'm just going to add a bit of trim just to keep the nose up and maintain our altitude with a little less power. So we can see the runway is just over there, a little far off in the distance. Oops. Just turn a little bit more inbound there. Okay, so we're going past the end of the runway now. So it's going to be time to set ourselves up for landing. In this plane, there really isn't that much to do. Uh, we really don't need the flaps to land this plane. Uh, we'll just basically come in uh, and then play with the power and play with the pitch to control our descent. So what we're going to do is we're going to maintain this course uh, that is parallel to the runway until we get to these rivers here. So that's the airport just giving us our clearance to land. Uh, so I basically use this riverway here to know when to turn onto my base lake. Uh, so in a couple of seconds, I'll just start turning to the base heading, which is 90 degrees off from our final approach heading. go. At this point we can reduce power even more, just below 3000 RPM I would say, to start descending very slowly. We can see the runways there. We're a little high at the moment. Uh, if you recall when we were looking at the uh, runway lights, uh, we want two red and two white. We got four white right now. But there are some trees right at the end of the runway there and I don't, I, I always seem to come in a little too low if I follow the uh, glide slope that's suggested by the light. So I always like to come in a little bit higher and readjust afterwards. Alright, we're going to turn to final now. Oof, we are very high actually. So I'm going to reduce power even more. 
Luckily we're in a cub and we can make these sort of type of adjustments on a short final approach. Uh, with a bigger plane it's obviously a little bit more difficult. So I have brought my power down to idle and I'm trying to hold my descent rate at around 700 feet per minute. Uh, just until we compensate for the uh, too high altitude that we're trying to adjust for. I'm just going to turn a little that way. This is why we do touch and goes, basically, to practice. <laughs> I've played a lot of flight sim, but I still sometimes stuff up that final approach. What probably happened there is I waited a little bit too long to um, to start my descent on the base leg. So we're at about 200 feet now. You can see the windsock right there. There's barely any wind. All right, I'm going to increase power just ever so slightly to reduce that descent rate make it as smooth as possible and I won't actually come to a touchdown so you can see there we went past the threshold so I could land at any point here with a very very light uh, vertical speed but what I'm actually gonna do is I'm actually gonna put the power down and we're going to head off again for our uh, next attempt at landing which will be our final attempt at landing So again, I'm maintaining the runway heading. What I'm going to do this time, though, is I am going to head uh, west, and we're going to cancel our landing intentions, and then we're going to uh, come back and enter the traffic pattern at that 45-degree angle when you're arriving from somewhere else. So I've got my power back to 4,000 RPM again, basically to maintain that nice steady climb climb rate and climb attitude, maintaining the runway heading. And now that we are clear, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to bring up the ATC window, continue to climb, and I'm going to start turning west. And what I'm going to do is cancel our landing intentions, so the airport's not waiting for us to do another traffic pattern right away. Okay, so we will come back to the ATC in a second. We're just going to fly west just a wee little bit. I might edit this out just for brevity's sake. Um, basically what I'm doing is I am trying to leave the area, the immediate area of the airport, uh, so that we can then loop back in and then join the traffic pattern from a higher altitude. All right, so here we are on our way back to the runway. Wh you can see that I'm at 1500 feet, so I'm above pattern altitude right now. We can see the airport right there. I am going to contact them. So to do that, I need to go back into the airport list, choose Gold Coast Airport, and request a full stop landing. Tower Savage Alpha Sierra X-ray Golf Sierra is three miles northwest with Golf to land. Savage Alpha Sierra X-ray Golf Sierra Tower. Fly left downwind runway three two. All right, I'm just going to acknowledge that. So, as before, our uh, pattern altitude's at 1,000 feet. I'm at around 1,200 feet, so I'm just going to reduce power just that wee little bit to bring us down to 1,000 feet. And we are entering the traffic pattern at that 45-degree angle. It's going to give us uh, just the right level of entry and we'll be able to tell when we want to turn onto our downwind leg. As they said, again, we're going to be doing a left downwind. So I'm just keeping an eye on our distance from the airport, keeping an eye on my altitude, keeping an eye on my airspeed. And I think that's about the right distance from the airport. So I am going to turn to be parallel to the airport now. The runway, sorry. And I'm just going to keep descending to a thousand feet very, very so slowly. There we go. So now we are parallel to the runway. And we are at our pattern altitude. 
Our airspeed is nice and smooth at around 70 knots or 140 kilometers an hour, whichever you prefer. And I am basically going to hold this altitude for the next couple seconds. So I'm doing that by adjusting the trim. Uh, as we discussed in the first flight lesson, the trim basically controls uh, the elevators and so that you don't have to keep a constant backwards or forward pressure on the stick so that uh, you can just sort of let go of the controls like I just did now and the airplane keeps flying uh, in a straight and level uh, attitude. So there we are, we're going past the end of the runway now. So just like last time, we'll go to that little uh, riverbed right there and we will turn onto our base turn and start preparing for our landing. And we'll try and do a little better than last time where we were a little high. Uh, on that final approach. I like giving myself that little bit of extra space on final just because, you know, I am not a professional pilot. I do this for fun. Uh, so I like having a little bit of extra leeway uh, if I need to make any final adjustments. So now I'm just going to reduce power to 3000 RPM for the descent. So just like last flight for landing, uh, we need about 3000 RPM for our descent and basically try and maintain a fairly uh, low uh, rate of descent. Alrighty, there we are over the riverbed. I haven't really spoken about the graphics in the game, but it is really stunning what you can see here. Alrighty, I think we're just about ready to turn on the final now. Keep descending at 3,000 feet. Sorry, at 3,000 RPM. There's our runway. We're a little high again. That's all right. All reduced power to around 2,800 RPM for final. I feel like that's a good amount of power for us. And I'm just going to try and maintain that descent rate. Just like the first time, I am aiming at a point on the runway. And basically, I am making adjustments to hit that point on the runway. So I saw my airspeed was increasing a little too much, so I'm just reducing power and keeping that point on the runway at the same spot in my windscreen as I was uh, the first time around. Airspeed's still a little high, but we're looking good in terms of our uh, final approach. Airspeed's going to start dropping off now, I imagine. Yeah. There we go. So I'm just going to try and reduce that descent rate. And now I'm looking towards the end of the runway. And I'm just going to keep her nice and steady as she comes down. Slow the plane down as much as possible. Let's just have a nice, smooth landing. There we go. All right, so again, uh, air traffic control just told us that we have to get off the runway, so I'm going to slow the plane down as much as possible. And that rear tail is going to drop ever so slowly. There we go. There's the windsock. And we are going to leave our power around 1400 RPM to get off the runway and basically clear for any other arriving aircraft. So that's our second flight. So that's our second flight in the bag. Uh, so we've learned uh, the basics of straight and level flight, turns, ascents. We've learned how to fly around an airport. And in the next flight, we'll have a look at uh, winds and weather. 
So I'll just acknowledge that handoff. Going to one, two, one decimal eight, Savage X-ray Golf Sierra. And at this point, basically, I could just tune ground and ask them to uh, taxi to parking. Cooley ground, Savage Alpha Sierra X-ray Golf Sierra request taxi to parking. And there we go. So we're just going to taxi to the gate uh, to the general parking. And that'll be it for our second flight, so thank you for joining me. Uh, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button if you learned something useful uh, about getting started with Flight Simulator. Uh, and if there's anything you're curious about or you want more details about, just reach out in the comments below. Thank you! See you next time!